Hey, I'm Caroline Buchanan from Tuggeranong BMX Club in the ACT. I love like the challenge of BMX. I started at the age of five and still today it's not like most other sports that you get out there and you know what you're in for. BMX is so unpredictable, you get out there, some of the time you don't even know what tracks you're riding, you get to an event, it's a new track, new challenges, new jumps, um, and even on the day there's the elements thrown in in BMX as well where you never know if it's going to be a side wind, a tailwind, a headwind, it's going to be raining. So I think that's a, the challenge that I love about BMX is that, that unpredictable side of it. Um, tell us in 30 seconds about how this season 2015 has, has gone for you so far. So far, pretty well. Um, achieving my goals, almost textbook. Uh, basically, yeah, done well in the national season, got the ball rolling into the World Cup season, won the first World Cup and here we are now at nationals. Um, and what about overall over the last year? Tell us in, in again in 30 seconds or so what you have achieved in the last 12 months. In the last 12 months it's been massive. I set some pretty high goals after coming back onto the BMX scene and I wanted to win the World Cup Series uh, last year, which I managed to do. I crashed out the World Championships, but still managed to get second in the time trial. I was really setting my goals high, and that's one thing that keeps me on track to achieving them is I try to set them outside what I think is achievable in the moment, and that was what, what I think made me walk away last year with the, the series title. Um, this weekend, what are your expectations for, for this national championship from a, from a personal perspective and, and to a to achieve those expectations, you know, what, what do you have to do? Who do you have to beat? Um, this weekend, I've been fortunate to be able to ride the whole season with the national flag on my sleeve, and that's a real honour. You know, I love riding for the nation, and going to the London Olympics, I experienced such a pride that Australia had and, and the bond. So to be able to ride with pride of that, that national championship sleeve for the year is something that I want to hold on to. So that's my goal this weekend is to try hold on to the sleeve and regain that, that national title. It's going to be tight, the girls are riding strong. Um, obviously the weather's looking maybe a little bit unpredictable for this weekend, but that's just going to be something that all the riders will have to deal with and my goal is to, yeah, come away with the title. Um, you mentioned the girls are, are riding well. There's, Australia's blessed with um, a lot of good talent. There's four of you in the high performance unit. Um, anyone stand out for this weekend? As yeah, Australia's going really strong. We're the number one ranked nation for London. We're coming strong in again for Rio, um, doing well. It's number one ranked as well. So yeah, there's four girls. Lauren Reynolds riding really well. We've just kicked off the first um, national season and you know, she's had some wins. I've had some wins. Rachel has been in there as well, Rach Jones. Yeah, Melinda McLeod, she had a win as well at one of the series stops. So four girls, one title, be a challenge. Excellent. Um Away from the track, what, who or what have been the biggest influences on you personally and, and turned you into the not only the sports person you are, but the woman that you are? Uh, growing up, I started racing BMX at the age of five. My family was a huge influence. My dad owns his own business, is in marketing, so he was obviously one that when I said nine years of age, I want to be a BMX bandit and race professionally, this is going to be my job, mum and dad. They are really help sort of mentor me in the right direction, set me up with some mentors like Robert De Costello, Lane Beachley, people that would obviously help guide me in the right direction to where I wanted to go. So they've been really influential um, to keep me on track and be actually fortunate enough to, to ride a bike for a living and continue to chase my goals. As well, just the Australian team, the high performance unit, Wade Boots, who's been my coach since I was about 14 years old. So yeah, right the way through, I think, that team unit is what you need at the races and especially when it's raining and things go wrong and yeah you need that support crew around you. Um, what makes you tick, what makes you get up in the morning and, and, and want to tackle the day whether it's a tough session or a, you know, a sponsorship commitment or, or, or whatever? I set my goals really high, I think that's one thing which makes me tick, continues to have that challenge and continues to be being motivated. Being a five-time world champion I want to be more. I want to be a seven-time world champion, ten-time world champion. Um, you know, I qualified first in the Atlanta Olympics, but I want to win a gold medal. There's always another step in, in how I view things, and that's really what makes when I wake up of a morning, what I strive to is just to always be better, and there's always is another goal, and never to be content with where you are now. And 
in our sport it's tough. There is always someone nipping on your heels trying to come through and um, you know when you are the hunted and the one that is the one who want, everyone wants to beat, it is a challenge to, to learn to win and then once you are a winner to stay on top and, and continue winning is another challenge again. So I enjoy the challenge of, of continuing to win and continuing that momentum. How do you mentally cope with the fact that you're putting every single piece of energy that you can into being the best BMX racer, but you're not in control of your own destiny sometimes up there on the, on the ramp and, you know, someone could take you out and your dreams can be dashed? I mean, is that something that bothers you? BMX, I think, is what you have to take with the sport. You love it for so many reasons like that, that it is unpredictable. You're not, you're not in between white lanes, you're not on a running track, you're not swimming in a pool. It is unpredictable and that's what I think it makes the win so much sweeter when you do stand on the podium and you have those successes. You know that you've overcome so much. When you have the losses it is hard because so much can go wrong. It can be outside of, of your control um, but that's what makes the win so much sweeter. Um, you've mentioned a number of times, <coughs> excuse me, you've mentioned a number of times the Olympic Games. Um, you've been to one. Um, it didn't turn out how you wanted it to turn out. Um, can you explain for us sort of that feeling after, after crossing the line there in London and, and then um, how that motivates you today? I did. Going to, into the London Olympics, it was my first Olympic Games, I basically thought I was prepared and had ticked a lot of the boxes but wasn't prepared for the final moment and, and that pressure and expectation on that start line for the Olympic final. And it's the best thing that's ever happened to me, walking away from that final. I crossed the line, I saw the medals in front of me, I was sitting in fifth position, and the first thing I said to myself was, damn, I've got to wait four years for another Olympic Games. And that felt like forever. You know, it sort of felt like everything had ended, what do I do now? I felt a little bit lost. Walking away from that, I had the best season of my career in 2013 with mountain biking and BMX World Titles. And it was really, you know, I pulled a lot of strength from that, that failure, that mistake in that Olympic final. And, it spurred me on to, to be a better person, better athlete, you know, deal with the highs and lows a lot better and be more prepared for, for Rio, which is less than a year away. Yeah, exactly. You, you said, you know, that was four years, which seemed like a long time then, but now 14 or 16 months probably doesn't seem like very long. Do you, do you wake up every morning thinking about it or do you wake up in the night dreaming about it? I definitely dream about it and every race that we get close to the Olympic Games, we're in the World Cup season now, so there's five stops of that and the World Championships this year. We race the girls day in, day out. I race Mariana, the Olympic champion, and, and when I do have those races that I do beat her, it's like I, you know, I just visualise to myself that that could have been the Olympic final. So I know that it's achievable and um, I sort of just visualise it as I'm going in the right direction. If I want to see a, a beautiful sunset in the morning where you've got to run you got to run east and I feel like I am running east and running towards towards that goal and it's going to come. Um, and, and what would it mean for you to to achieve that goal of, of not only qualifying for, for another Olympics but, but winning a gold medal and standing on the top of the dais? Be pretty amazing. It was uh, to be in London was a dream come true and just to feel it made me even more hungry than I was prior to London. The pride of the nation for everyone who supported me, for all my sponsors, my family, for everyone who I think believed in me when I didn't believe in myself, all my mentors, like you know, Lane Beachley, everyone. You know, I'd I'd love to do it for everyone, but also for myself, and um, yeah, it'll be a lifelong, long goal. But I'd love to go on to Tokyo as well. So still got a bit in me.